Hello and welcome to another Free Fridays. Today we're going to be playing um, a game, obviously. It should be revealed in a second. Um, okay, this is taking a long time. Um, Glitch Hikers, that's what it's called. Um, so it's kind of, um, I've not got much of a clue what kind of game it is. It's a driving game, I guess. Um, and it's a sort of, well, you can kind of see yourself. Ooh, change lanes. Oh, I'm like falling asleep at the wheel here. It's 1.26 a.m. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a driving game. Cosmic Latte. Did you see that sign there? So can I like move around? No. Like, I, like look around the cockpit. Well, I'm going to like fall asleep. Select advanced dialogue. Alright, so it's got dialogue there. So you can go like really fast or slow down. Well, this guy's. Oh, you can. You can look left and right. Hundred kilometers. That's quite fast, actually. Well, so what do I do? That was Pinky's dream by David Lynch. This ah, nice. Is Radio ninety, and you're listening to Night Drive. Thanks for joining us tonight. Almost a hundred years before Columbus ever sailed to the Americas, a Chinese explorer named Shang He made seven naval expeditions, traveling thousands of miles with over three hundred ships. When the next emperor came to power, all the ships were destroyed, and the Ming Dynasty entered a period of isolationism that lasted hundreds of years. Mm. With that one decision, the fate of the world changed. Let's go on a journey together, with our next song, Find Me, on a Whim. So that's interesting. It's kind of like uh, Lost Highway. You know the David Lynch film Lost Highway? They referred to um, David Lynch there. But that's interesting, it's like the radio kind of echoes what you're, what's going through your head or it kind of puts stuff in your head. Like, take a journey, that kind of thing. So, are there hitchhikers in this game then? I mean, I presume there are. Oh, hang on, there's, there's a hitchhiker there. How do I... Oh, I missed him. Whoa, there's like glitches up there, did you see that? Oh, it's a car. So do you... How do you pick up hitchhikers? I mean, I can't seem to, like, stop... I can't seem to go lower than 90. 90 kilometers per hour. What is it like speed or something? If it goes under that, it blows up. Okay, let's like overtake that car. Now, are those glitches part of the world or are they part of my tired vision? There's like an eye up in the sky there. It's quite creepy actually. I'm quite evocative of, you know, driving at night. Now, let's see what this guy's up to then. Whoa. So how do I... Yeah, I need to know how to pick up hitchhikers. Because I definitely saw one there on the road. So, max speed is 120 then. Oh, I missed that sign. What's all this? Yeah. It's difficult to know 
what is in actual fact going on here. That stuff that's like coming up from inside the car. I'm getting flashbacks to Enviro Bear. I half expect it to be a skunk jammed in the wheel at one point. Right, let's see if we can pass this car. Or can you? Is it actually a 3D object or is it just like lights in the background? See, I don't want to go too fast in, in case I miss a hitchhiker. I mean, I have no idea when they come up. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. There's someone in the car. Thanks for the pickup. I was beginning to think it would be hours before I got a lift from something worthy. So, did you automatically did you automatically pick them up then? I assume you do. That maybe was the one that was there. Bad experience. Oh, it's like I um, had a bad experience with hitchhiking before. You know, you've got your dialogue options. It's nothing a little drive can't fix. Just the next rest stop would be great. A good drive can fix a lot. Mind if I smoke? Well, you've already started, so <laughs> I guess not. Oh, hang on. Driving is fun. Driving is calming. Driving is a metaphor. It's all just a metaphor. Is that a joint? What exactly are you smoking? Good old BC bud. And that was a little on the nose, don't you think? They say the journey's more important than, you know, the the destination, yeah. Why are you driving? Because I like it to find something, just to get somewhere. Oh, okay. I mean, the answers don't immediately make sense. Or no, they, they don't, yeah, they don't immediately make sense, but they also don't immediately appear to be any different. I'm driving to find, yeah, let's, I'm saying that. I don't know. I'm driving to find the Ming Dynasty, according to what the radio said. We're all looking for something, right? Answers, meaning perhaps, ourselves. It is a bit like Lost Highway. When I was a kid, we had a cabin out in one of the islands at night. We could see thousands of stars. Just like tonight. It was so bright. We didn't need a flashlight. I gave them all names. Atticus and Caesar. Garuda and Saul. They fought each other in wars of my making. Alliances formed and were broken. Explosions burst across the sky. I was a god to them. <laughs> there is no god. That's quite depressing. Well, we're going to tunnel. Stars are light in the darkness. Let's see that. I think the stars are light in the darkness. Maybe the darkness is an illusion. My parents pretty much ignored me. Father was too drunk, mother too busy. Yet I still remember those days fondly. I think that says something about me. Um, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Is this like a psychology session? Um, psychiatric session? One day a man came to the grassy spot where I played. He said he was from the stars and he pleaded for my mercy. I told him it was all make-believe. He just shook his head. Did that really happen? Don't you believe me? Maybe I don't believe myself. I was just a kid. 
Too bad I was never really a kid. Thanks for the lift. So do you automatically... Well, yeah. that was a little different. Ever wonder why the night sky is black, even though there is nowhere you can look that doesn't eventually have a star? Shouldn't it be white? And scientists say the average color of the universe is beige. <laughs> there are stars above you even in the day, and they are watching. So you get like little conversations with with hitchhikers. I half expect like um, Fraser Crane to come on the radio. You know, if you're driving through the outskirts of Seattle or something like that, you're listening to people's problems late at night. I mean, I know he, his radio show wasn't late at night, but I just I don't know. So you automatically pick up and drop off passengers. Actually, look, there's one there. Yeah, there we go. Whoa! Okay, that's scary. Just to the nearest hospital. The baby's just about ready to pop out. Thanks for the pickup. Okay, that's weird. Not many of your species seemed willing to take me. Oh, it's like, it's a reference to the previous story. It's like, you know, someone from beyond the stars. And now someone supposedly from beyond the stars is, is right here in my car. Shouldn't you get an ambulance? You're not human. My species. You're not human? You can make the story about you or about her, I guess. Notice that, did you? I'm from a little planet in the Triangulum Galaxy. Our star got too close to another system and almost collided with a blue giant. This could just be like the effect of like tiredness. Tiredness and hallucination. A tiredness induced hallucination. There was a war, and it made the planet totally unlivable, of course, so we left. What was your planet like? They say it was once beautiful. A night sky full of moons, bioluminescence everywhere. I only knew it as it was getting ripped apart. My journey here was long, but wonderful. There are so many worlds in the galaxy, so much life. A little planet of tiny volcanoes and baobabs. A civilization of artists and dreamers who believe we are all just living in someone else's story. Tribes of nomadic people who live amongst the stars. You know, all the elements that form life were created in the heart of a star that exploded spreading the elements throughout the galaxy. You and me, we're made of stars. Oh yeah, that was like, David Bowie said that, I guess? We are one with the universe. You can philosophize. We are, all of us children of the stars. In many mythologies in this world, the sun is a deity of power, light, fire, strength. Some myths say it must be reborn every year. Whereas the Earth Goddess represents life, birth, fertility. But really, there would be no life without the sun. No Earth without the sun. We are all born from stars like the sun. Shouldn't the sun god be the creator of life? Hmm. Forgive the ancients their mistakes. It's just a metaphor. They were dumb back then. I'm going to pick three. Of course they are. All of it is. Human students of semiotics say everything could be a sign of something else, yeah. That's, um, structuralism. My sister lost a baby. For years she couldn't talk about it. Then one day she said to me, it's just as well. This universe doesn't care about life. I'll wait for the next one. I can't wait. The hospital's just up here. Sonder, you know what that is. It's the sudden realization that every other person 
all the people around you driving those cars are fully conscious people with their own stories and goals and loves and thoughts. Just think about that for a second. And she's away. And the circle of life continues. We don't always have control over our lives, over what happens to us. But we do control how we react. Accept, grow, live, love, hide, feed, wither, wisen, embrace, fight. You are all alone out there, but you know, you're never alone. There's a kind of distinct bacteria share your body. You're never alone. Keep driving, driver. Turtles all the way down is up next. Hmm. I want to just be alone with my bacteria. <laughs> so yeah, the stories are kind of related. So you're following a thread of thought, I guess. What's interesting is some of these games are very loose in their story and themes. Others are more precise. Like that one, um, Unmanned, that was more about a very specific story. This one, um, and I guess last week's one, the themes were looser. Hey, there's somebody there. Will they appear in my seat? Yes. Whoa, another freaky headed person. The universe is expanding, and yet the universe has no edge. I don't know if it is expanding. What is it expanding into? I'm in my fourth year of physics and I don't really get it. Infinite spaces can expand infinitely. The more important edges in space per time. I'll go with that. I don't know if the universe is actually expanding anymore. Yet time feels like infinity. We live our whole lives in this tiny blip of time. And yet it's so filled with love and imagination. Enjoy, it seems so much bigger. See, the thing is, I don't really need to get it. It's like 300 billion stars in our galaxy alone. And billions more galaxies out there. Our little single planet doesn't matter a bit in it at all. And yet it's still wonderful, don't you think? Yeah, why not? Even within an infinity of the unknown, we still have love and happiness. And life. In all the crazy infinity that is our existence, in all the vastness of understanding we still lack, there's this amazing thing that is consciousness. Carl Sagan once said, Since we are part of the universe, consciousness allows the universe to know itself. That's beautiful. Not familiar with Carl Sagan. Well, I've not read any of his stuff. One day in the lab, we were doing chemistry experiments. Just a simple grade school exercise of burning different substances to see the colours they produce, like fireworks. Magnesium, copper, strontium, lithium, science and art come together. My lab partner was this girl I didn't know. But God, she was pretty in sort of a spunky way. We talked about different kinds of stars and the heat death of the universe and entropy. It was the start of something beautiful. You can be really pessimistic. What was her name? I guess that reflects you, I guess. We went away the next day, far away, to a little world of our own, floating amongst nebulae and white dwarfs. White dwarf, the magazine, 40k and undiscovered planets. Our sense of humour was dry, sometimes I didn't even know she was joking. She said the most absurd things, how she wanted to die in the heart of a star. I said she'd burn up long before she got close and she looked at me like it was a challenge. We laughed and cried together, helped each other through tough times, family and friends and our own minds. The way she looked at me, a little smile in her eyes, the way she could rattle off chemical equations and the constructions of molecules. She drew them in her sleep and I watched her eyelids flutter gently, the rise and fall of her chest, the tendons in her arms. 
you watch the fireworks together on New Year's, rattling off the compound views, the balance of heat and luminosity. So you're trying to make science and art one and the same. We were together six months before it flamed out, too intense for us to keep it up. What do they say in Blade Runner, the brightest stars burn out or something? Because that's supposed to be like Roy Batty. He burns brighter than humans because he thinks and feels more deeply than them, but he, yeah, he, he wears himself out quicker. Love is an amazing thing. It's what it's all about. Connecting with other people like that, the universe knowing itself. I'm going to see my new girlfriend now, just outside the city. We're all going to die in a fire explosion one day. We are. It's just going to happen. But what a wonderful thing to be part of in the meantime. Well, if we're around for that. I love driving, don't you? Why do you drive? To find something. Like I said to the previous person. Understanding me, driving helps me find it. There are answers out there. And the beauty is in the search. Drive on. So Look at the night sky. What do you see out there? Emptiness? Chaos? An uncaring void? Or do you see the stars? The art of the nebulae? The romance of distant galaxies? Is God watching you? Is she watching any of us? Seven million people on this world. And all we have is each other. Our own little infinity. Now count back with me, driver. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Mew. And I Welcome fell asleep back. at the wheel. This has been Radio 90 Night Drive. Travel safely. Good night. It certainly makes you think, in a kind of quiet sort of way. I wonder if these encounters are randomised? Like it picks from a little... Ooh, is that like a shooting star? Oh look, here's like a city. Nice. I mean, it could be anywhere, but I think that there is like an American. Let's exit to the city, if that's possible. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's quite anonymous, but that, those uh, overhead signposts are very much like American ones. They're not, you don't get them like that in the UK. Well, you, you do kind of, but they look a little bit different. Oh, I am actually turning off. So now what? Oh, okay. So yeah, I wonder if the encounters are, are randomised? Yeah, it's interesting. It's one of those games that it's more about your interpretation of it rather than any specific narrative that it puts forward. I mean, it gives you clues of thought lines, but it really is up to you to a, 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 an extent. But yeah, that was pretty good actually. I think what I'll do is I'll play another game. I'll check, I'll check how long this video has been so far. Um, who was the voice of the radio? Jacob Burgess. that's like radically different um, you know one which has 
more of a tighter specific narrative or one that's maybe not a first person what oh you're thanking Alfred Lord Tennyson oh was that one of the quotes well because there's Carl Sagan there Silver String Media. But yeah, I think that was pretty good actually. Um, it's one of those games that I imagine you can play in different, you know, you get different narratives depending on what you um, say, but maybe different hitchhikers. Like I say, maybe it's randomised. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that looks like that's the end there. So what I'll do is I might tack a small video of another one on at the end of this one. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed. Okay, so for a bonus video then, we're going to be playing VVVVVV Make and Play Edition, which is a free version of um, the main game. Uh, and it's, a, as you can see, a level editor as well as, well there you go, a level editor as well as you can play other people's creations. So let's just do that then. Um, let's just do this one, three, 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 three. Easy mode. A strange force has teleported me and my friends into this strange dimension. I should investigate. At least it looks perfectly safe out there. That's a relief. So it's kind of like one of those retro type games. Spikes, I knew it. Why every pocket dimension we discover seems to contain hundreds of razor sharp spikes is beyond me. I've never told anyone this, but they're terrifying. You may consider them trivial, since we just go back to the last checkpoint. But that split second I get a face full of spikes is nightmare fuel. Let's be careful around here, eh? Spikes, always with the spikes. Yeah, it reminds me of like platform oh platformers from you know the C64, the ZX Spectrum era. You know what, I'm not sure why, but this place seems to remind me, yeah, of those old platform games for arcade computers. As you come to think of it, so did Dimension V V V V V V. Maybe there's a connection. Yeah, it reminds me of like Jet Set Willy, because the levels are named. Uh, each screen, damn, each screen is named. Um, it has a title. Whoa. So yeah, let's play a bit of this. I mean, we'll probably play about five to ten minutes of this. Whoa. Nice. Press enter. You're trapped in dimension 333333. That's 333,333, or three for sure. I wonder why I'm here. You're here to rescue your crewmates. Each is stranded in a different district of dimension 33333. Maybe you, when you found them all, maybe you'll be able to escape from here. My friends are near. I hope I can see them soon. Wait a second, did that computer just answer me in plain English? Of course you fool. We have all Ultra Tech mod cons, you know. After all, we are the ones creating these pocket dimensions. Handcraft with the finest specifications. Why did you capture my friends? Because it's fun to watch you squirm. That's one reason. This is just an exercise in cruelty. Cruelty. No child, but you are too simple to understand the bigger picture. Right now, philosophy is entirely academic. You have heroic deeds to attend to, such as rescuing your crewmates and collecting trinkets. Alright. You're right, I really think I should find those trinkets. I'm my crewmates, of course. Then perhaps we can work out a way to go home. Well, ah. So you've got to have pixel perfect um, skill and a mastery of like 
the way in which he falls, and also, I guess, well, nice. Also, I guess, like, really quick reactions. The green district is to the east, to the west lies the blue district and the vaunted info desk. Info desk? Don't ask. Okay, let's go here then. Is this like the green district? Oh, those automatically send you back when you hit them. Hey, what's that? Careful here. Blue zone, let's go this way. Whoa. Listen to that funky, funky music. So, where do I go now? I like Ah oh, nearly made it. Into or out of the blue cavern. The music's really cool in this game. Because it's kinda like sort of kind of chip tune, but it's also got its own sort of themes as well. Oh yeah, the trinkets. One out of twenty. Whoa. Death stars and cubby holes. So okay. So I think I have to Ah Right, I know what I've gotta do. I've gotta use that as like a like a resting place. There we go. You must remember this, it says. Whoa. Oh, there's one of the... Oh. You've just got to have perfect timing. And that's generous that they put a... They put a checkpoint... Ah. Oh, halfway through it. I suppose it did say it is a... No, I'll let this pass a little bit. Ah, it still got me. There we go. Oh. So where am I going now? Ah, look, there's one there. But we've got to be really careful. Gotcha. Oh, dang it. I'm basically like magnetized to these squares. So, how the hell are we supposed to get that one? Yay! Shiny, shiny, trinket. Oh, dang it. I think you have to go this way. Okay, what should... Can you... Oh, yeah, it's like... Um, Castlevania or Metroid. It gives you the over... The whole map. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll just save here. Did I save? There we go. Um... And you can join me in Free Fridays next week, where we continue this game. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Let's uh, just quit out there. Alright, so I'll see you next week for another Free Fridays. Bye!